Ohio. The Minnesota Vikings have been around since 1961. And I just want them to win a damn Super Bowl before I die. Welcome to Before I Die with Jesse and Miles on Purple Daily and Score North. Just one, just one before we die. Yes, this is Before I Die on Purple Daily and Score North. I'm Jesse Pierce. He's Miles Gorham. He's Ross Brundle. What's up, boys? How are we feeling? Your Minnesota Vikings, we got to be feeling good. Your Minnesota Vikings, 4-0, and remain undefeated, and they get the victory at Lambeau. We might call it Sambo because Sam Darnold was incredible once again. We're feeling good, boys, on this Monday morning. I'm feeling great. I am feeling excellent I there's nothing better than a victory over I know the Packers are going to say oh good you guys got your Super Bowl because you beat us yeah we did I'll take it I love it I have no apologies for that a win is a win I don't like I knew I knew the second it went to 28 nothing I was like and well no not 28 nothing I knew when that muff punt by Jalen Naylor happened I was like oh sh- mm. shoot it's going to be a closer game than it should be I just like knew it right it was like one of those like things are going too well something needs to happen and but overall yeah i'm feeling great like they won at the end of the day i was like i don't care how the game ends as long as it ends in a w and they ended up yeah. pulling it off they only had to score three more three points in the second half um which is still like nail biting but they did what they had to do and i feel like kevin o'connell i feel like that there's a couple calls in that game that were just so so wild to me not just like against the vikings that also like against the packers too like you're like it just felt inconsistent from a refing standpoint yesterday. And mm-hmm. I feel like that changed a little bit of the game dynamics. But overall, feeling great. I, f- I felt like the offense was do- was was dealing, especially in the first half. They, they just flipped. The, the Vikings, the Packers flipped, right? The yeah. first half was all Vikings and everything that they're doing, they couldn't go wrong. And the second half was all Packers. Most of what they couldn't do couldn't go wrong. But they're the ones that made the bigger mistakes than we did. And that's what cost them the game. And the Vikings won. And so that's all that matters to me. Um, like you said, Sam Darnold slinging couple more e yeah. know, plays in a game yesterday than what we've seen the first three weeks for uh, you know out of the four, first four games. But you'll still take it because he still ended up with a really good stat line and and looked good overall. We'll get into Sam Darnold. I need to remind people. I had to remind myself like Sam Darnold is a first round pick. Like this isn't you know shouldn't be third overall. Well, the, third overall exactly like. We there is reason to be surprised, but not that surprised, right? Like there was reason. There were things there, and I'll talk about Sam Darn a little bit. I want to go back to that first half, though. This is the mo Ross for your Minnesota Vikings. It seems is come out fast, come out hard, get those points. I'm loving that. There's that fuel. There's that energy. Yes, it'd be nice to be able to close it out more comfortably in the second half, which prior to the game against the Packers, the Vikings had been doing. And again, they're going to be battle tested throughout the rest of the season as well. But they were able to manage to pull it off. But I'm loving a fast, hard start, boys. What do you think? First off, brilliant work on Sambo. I hadn't even thought about that. Um Maybe I can't go- take credit. I'm sure I saw it on Twitter as elsewhere. I cannot take complete credit. So copyright infringement, whatever. I apologize. Somebody said it and I was like, you know, that's kind of that's kind of cute. I like it. I'll dig it. That's OK, Jesse, because most people's good ideas are stolen from other people's good ideas. So you can still take credit for it. The fast start, I think, allows the Vikings to do a couple of things. And we've seen it now pretty much every week throughout the season. There's a reason why Sam Darnold, unless he got there yesterday, I apologize for not looking this up hasn't passed for over 300 yards yet. He's putting up all these gaudy numbers. Well, part of the reason why he hasn't had to do that is the Vikings get these nice leads and they milk the game away and they milk the clock away with the run game to a degree. They were still able to do that yesterday. I think there were some other questionable things that happened that we'll get into, but the fast start allows the Vikings to do what we've seen a commitment to. They want to run the football more. They want to control the clock more. They want to dictate the game that way. And even in the second half, as the game was, potentially slipping away or getting out of hand. We still saw nice runs from Aaron Jones when it mattered the most to get first downs, bleed a little bit of clock and eventually help the Vikings put the game away with the uh, big leg bill field goal. His first outdoor make, by the way, good for big leg bill. Yeah, that that's it. Jesse, you hit the nail on the head is these nice kind of start fast. I don't want to say cruisable wins. Nothing in the NFL is cruisable, although a couple of the Vikings final scores would dictate that but being able to run the ball control the line of scrimmage is a key part to their success of being 4-0 and at this point I mean it's fun two miles it's just so much fun winning is fun it's fun oh so Wait. fun yeah 
Yeah, well, and, and you you guys all said it. Like to be, I th- this was going into the season. One of my biggest questions is, can they figure out the run game? And they've clearly figured out the run game. And I think I just think there's an underrated part of like how important that has been to how good this offense has been able to be, and this, just to be able to sustain drives, pick up chunk plays. Um, and I think just like the overall speed. And then I'm I'm a big Aaron Jones fan, and I I like I'll I'll continue to reiterate that. Plus, he's on my fantasy team, so I know Ross. Mm. And and Jesse, both of you were complaining about trying to get him a touchdown. I was like, go for it. I he's on my fantasy team. Let's get <laughs> let's get that touchdown. Uh, Obligatory fantasy football mention. Keep that sound bar ready. I've got That's so true. much well, to cover on right, that, man. Right, right. Oh, but yeah. and he didn't get one. But his ability in the pass game, just like it's it, like a, they're able to like their ability to like finally get the run game going this year and be sustained. But also just his ability in the pass game. It's like we haven't had a receiving back like this in a very long time. And I just think it's a very underrated part of like how this offense has been able to roll. And so that and then Sam Darnold being able to sling it on, on third and longs. Like first drive yesterday, the Vikings first drive, right? Like almost ends in an interception, drop dropped by the Packers player, comes back and throws a 25 yard, I think, something like gain to Jalen Naylor on third and 14. Like those types of things, huge, right? And so it's like it's nice to see that even when their back's against the wall, this team doesn't just crumble. They don't just like settle. They're like, no, 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 we're going to keep driving. And so um, overall, those hot starts and just their ability overall on offense has been has been great to see. I know we have some grievances maybe to get to with Aaron Jones, (laughs) who we do mostly love. But there were some issues with the Aaron Jones revenge game, maybe taking two front and center yesterday. But I want to talk about Sam Darnold, too. The surgical precision in which he operates, and I think that was really showcased yesterday. I've seen it certainly every week, but there is a reason that his passer rating of at least 100 in all four games. His footwork and the way that he's able to just move his body so fluidly is absolutely incredible to me, right? Like, am I just behind on this? And maybe it's because it's still, it's so different from Kirk Cousins. Not criticizing Kirk again. I know that people think I... You're right. I was on the side of dislike, but Sam Darnold, just the way the mechanics of his body moves so fluidly in the way. And I think the other thing that I really love about Sam Darnold and the way that he's operating as a quarterback and running this team, moving his offense, he's not afraid to make those throws. You look at that touchdown pass to Justin yeah. Jefferson. Kirk Cousins is never taking a risk like that. Sam Darnold is like, no, that is Justin Jefferson. I am going to make that was this insane, throw. by the way. That play it was, was insane. Was insane. Absolutely insane. And JJ does does what JJ does. I am loving all of that. So Sam Darnold, bow down. Thank you for making football so much fun to watch. Well, and and real quick, I think the biggest part of the Sam Darnold, and I know it's always a comparison to Kirk Cousins because he was here for the last six years. He made a lot of money. There's a lot of discourse, right? But I think the biggest difference is just like Sam Darnold naturally has a better arm. And that's what it is. He doesn't have to generate this like a whole bunch of torque from his lower body to get a lot of zip on the ball, to throw the ball downfield. Kirk Cousins had to, has to put a little bit more oomph into it with his body to get the to get throws off. And Darnold doesn't always have to be on a perfect platform to get the ball off um, down the field with zip. And so I think that's a huge difference in this offense is what we're seeing is Sam Darnold's, yes, the mechanics have obviously gotten better, but his ability to just like sling the ball effortlessly, it doesn't require like Kirk has to throw with better anticipation because he doesn't have the strongest arm. He has to put a little bit more torque into it. And I would assume now, too, with the Achilles in, coming off the Achilles injury, has to do that even more. Darnold isn't. Darnold has a stronger arm and more natural like throwing ability. And so you can tell in this offense, when his, when he's just asked to just sling it, it looks more effortless. And so that that in itself for me is like a huge difference in what we're seeing, too. He's also to a degree uh, two for two right now in the step up and save us category. You go back a few weeks when that Niners game was perhaps getting a little bit in doubt. He steps up, makes that nice throw to Jalen Naylor to help put the put the game away. And then yesterday, where I think everybody amongst us, when Green Bay makes it 28 to 22, you say, how is it? I know it's possible because it's the Vikings, but how is it possible that they're going to potentially lose this game? And albeit they didn't necessarily put the pedal to the metal and really put the game away. Just being able to go down the field off of a couple of nice throws that Sam Darnold was able to make and at least put three points on the board ended up being the difference of the game. And I'm, I'm not sure if Sam Darnold does that two, three years ago when he's with the jets or the Panthers 
So props to him for being able for being able to do that. Two for two in the save us category. I'm going to talk to NFL.com and ESPN about <laughs> adding that to their stats. We love that. I told I know we well go ahead, Mouth. Oh no, I'm just saying any and he's tough as nails. You see, like all the hits yeah. yesterday and yeah. coming off of like the bruised knee from last week. Um yeah. I he came up limp one of the plays and I was like, oh no. Like mm. I think we just got, you know, I think we just had our 2017 moment. Nick Mullins, please be Case Keenum. <laughs> um, you know, and so like I it's just like watching him be tough and still come through. And I think it just shows like how much uh respect he's got and how much confidence. Kevin O'Connell has in him, especially what you're saying, Ross, at the end. You're just like, hey, save us, Sam Darnold. And he's been able to do it and come through it. And you could tell that the confidence is sky high from from Kevin O'Connell and the rest of the the guys on offense. KOC, the quarterback whisperer. We all know it. We all love it. It's a beautiful thing. Little bit of an issue with perhaps some of the scheming that they were doing to really emphasize Aaron Jones and his revenge game. Yes. And I was actually in Packer territory. I was in La Crosse, Wisconsin this weekend, and all the Packer fans there were very sad that Aaron Jones was with us. They loved him, right? He's, he was a fan favorite. They were bummed that that was no longer a situation. I uh, love that Aaron Jones did the Lambo leap in his Vikings uni at the end of the game. It was a beautiful thing. However, the way that they were trying to get Aaron Jones a touchdown and the forcible way that they were giving him the ball to result in a pick at the one yard line. Absolutely brutal. Ross, I know you have very, very strong feelings about this as well. Please. The platform is yours, my friend. Yeah. And again, the Vikings won the game. So always celebrate a victory and be happy with it. But I think every NFL team will tell you, and Kevin O'Connell talked about this in the post game. There's always things to work on, always things to get better at. I think that comes from a, Head coaching standpoint and a coaching standpoint too. Third and one late in the first half. I don't love, I'll get to Aaron Jones in a second. I don't love passing in that moment and punting the ball. You've ran the ball successfully all game long, literally just falling forward for a yard or two, basically every carry run that ball right there. So at the very minimum, you go to half up 28, nothing didn't love that play call. Didn't love, didn't love how that developed trying to force feed Aaron Jones down inside the five. I get it. I have no problem running there. You've done that well all game. You've done that well all season. I would say at some point, how about a hard play action to a tight end who's just wide open in the back of the end zone? Wide open. Because everybody they did it. Selling, because everybody's selling out. No, they, they did, but that's what I'm saying. You could probably have done that all day long and kept yeah. doing that. Also, that was a bit more of a, what was that, an, a kind of an out by, by Oliver. I, I just, that's only the starting point, okay? The third and one or later, was it, maybe it was one third, wasn't third and one. I can't remember. But the interception, first off, that's not an interception. That was not it. No. Based off of the precedent that officiating crew had set all game, that was not an interception. But whatever. Mm-hmm. Whatever. That play right there just epitomized to me. We are trying to do something individually in a team game. And it was evident all game long they were trying to get him a touchdown. Yes. You force a ball into coverage where it ends up being intercepted in air quotes. You had two guys wide open five yards downfield, just waiting for the ball to get the first down and you try and force it in. Maybe the throw could have been a bit better. Maybe it would have been a touchdown. That was just another moment where guys get three, get seven, put the game away. And here we are trying to force feed it to a guy just so he can do his Lambo leap. I don't like that. I get that Kevin O'Connell knows more about football than I ever will. I get it. I get it. But I just didn't like that. When you're on the road, you can't play with fire. And the Vikings did that for 38 minutes yesterday. And I just didn't like that. However, credit to them for getting off to the hot start and winning the game. But the the force feeding Aaron Jones, especially as the game got late, just felt a little ridiculous to me. Put the game away. Mm -hmm. Beat your rival. I mean, it's more evident that they were clearly listening to Before I Die on Purple Daily and Score North, and they heard that Miles has Aaron Jones on his fantasy yep. team, and he was there. Obligatory fantasy football mention. It's probably what happened. <laughs> Definitely what happened, I would say. Uh, speaking of fantasy football, go ahead, hit it again. Jordan Addison was on my bench yesterday, guys, because I forgot oh. I was going to move, and I'm like, it's his first game back, but Jordan Addison, bravo, my friend. You have earned your spot back in my starting lineup uh, when I'm not going against Derrick Henry because that just ruined my entire day yesterday. So what are we going to do, guys? Can I can I give a, a social <laughs> media shout out to somebody else in this market? Yes. I thought Henry Lake from WCCO had, had a, it's, first off, it's a very Ross-like tweet, but it was a great tweet saying that the only thing stopping Jordan Addison from a successful career in the NFL is his car keys. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know very, what? Very, very well done, Henry Lake. Very well done. H Lake very always good. getting it. Now, obviously, we've talked all about the offense. We love us some offense. We love that, but we can't go a Vikings victory without addressing B Flow and his defense again. I, Jordan, loved all the turnovers that were happening yesterday. Did you see what I did? Well there? done. Well Thank done. You. Thank you. That was. I worked on that yesterday. I was like, I'm going to say this because it's going to be funny. And my husband thought it wasn't that good, but I think it's great. So let's talk about the defense again. How much confidence, Miles, do you have in the defense moving forward? Like it is just, it's a constant threat. I think there's just no way around it. They are so good. And again, all the elements of the Minnesota Vikings are good. It's probably the most complete football team. I would venture to say in the NFL, very, very close, right? I mean, everything is yeah. working there. But defensively, I just don't know that that's ever going to fall apart. I love it. The wheels are on. They are glued oh, don't, on. Don't, don't, don't say that. No, I have to. Can I just be positive for once? And I love it. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not okay. going to all be right, afraid, right, Miles. Right. It's beautiful. Talk you're right. You. No, no, you're right, though. And I think the biggest part of it is just like all the – we talked about this last week. The amount of communication that happens on that defense. Like those guys are all in sync, and you can tell. And obviously they gave up a lot of yards yesterday, and that was in part because they were up a lot. So um, the the pat the, the the Packers are going to throw the ball a lot. They Dern Love threw a lot of uh, like prayers, you know, and, and some of them yeah. hit yesterday, and some of them didn't. And so um, I think that was a big part of how they got a lot of big chunk plays yesterday was just because they were just throwing the ball down the field because they had to, right? And most teams are going to give up points or and give up yards in those situations. But I think early in the game you could tell like Flores was dialing, right? And and yeah. dealing and those guys were re really ready for what they were seeing against the Packers and I think Flores just has done such a good job going into games with these schemes and understanding what teams do well and how to best take away it take take it away because for most of that game yesterday Jaden Reed was probably the only guy in that team doing anything against the Vikings defense yesterday otherwise it yeah. was kind of like maybe some chunk plays in the run game just a little bit and I feel like if we hadn't got up to a huge a huge um, lead early, maybe the run game could have been a problem. And that's something that maybe a little going forward that I, we, we might still have an issue with, but mm -hmm. yesterday you could tell that like their ability to shut it down and create turnovers. Like so that's many. been such a, so many, but like, that's been such a like issue for this defense for so long is like they're in position at times, but they're not creating those turnovers in key situations. And they're coming up with all these key turnovers like lately right. that, that catch by a uh, uh, Grugier Hill yesterday, that interception, that was insane. Uh, like I feel bad for so Christian insane. Watson. I I hate seeing injuries, right? And yeah. that was a a byproduct of that. But that catch was insane. That was like one of the best catches of the day yesterday. And that's a linebacker, and that's two weeks in a row for him uh, filling in for Ivan Pace. So even your backups are coming in and making big plays. You know, Shaq Griffin yesterday off that off the deflection. Like I don't even know how he caught that. I don't even know how he saw the ball. But that mm -hmm. was that was great. Love seeing that. Byron Murphy owed me one because he's dropped a couple. So he owed me one yesterday. So I'm glad he was able to catch mm -hmm. that punt yesterday on that interception. So all of this to say, like, they're just doing such a great job of, like, playing sound, strong defense. And then Cam Bynum, I feel like that dude, can we get him an extension? I'd yes. love to get Cam Bynum signed to an extension because that man has just been able to create turnovers a lot lately. And he's just locked in. And I'm just really excited. But again, yeah. the only downside I would say is just like I think the run game is still still a little bit of a concern if you catch the right team and you're not up by 28 points in the first mm -hmm. half against everybody. I w I am curious to see how the run game is gonna gonna fare ag against teams that run the ball a bit more consistently. So we'll see. But overall, super excited. B flow, keep rolling. I actually thought Green Bay had a great drive to start the game before their missed field yeah. goal. I thought they were doing everything that you talked about. Miles was. I think that's what a lot of Vikings fans, when they look at the defense, I think everybody will echo what Miles said, that you're maybe still a little bit worried about the running game. And Green Bay was able to get theirs in the run game while the game was close. I also don't really worry about what happened defensively in the second half, because to Miles' point, the defense maybe lets up a tiny bit, not saying their intensity, but how you're calling the game maybe changes a little bit. Also, Green Bay is going to pass the ball three out of every four times. And let's not forget because the Vikings offense was going three and out and punting the ball a lot and turning the ball over. That put the entire defense out on the field a lot more in the second half. 
I'm actually really excited to see how the Vikings respond this week going overseas and how the Jets respond after a clunker of a performance coming off of a really nice performance. So I think this uh, London game, I believe this one's London. I got to be honest, I've completely lost track now that we're playing all seven continents. I never know where we're playing. It is. It is the London game. Is it, okay. Oh, that, you know what? I, now that you say that, I did hear the uh, we did the promo with the guy from London in that awesome accent previewing Hello. the game yesterday. So that's it. <laughs> that sounded a bit more like Steve bit. Irwin, the crocodile hunter. But I could, I could probably, yeah. <laughs> Cherry out. <laughs> I, I don't have a ton of complaints about the defense, other than I worry about what Miles says. And Miles, I don't know how that will get much better throughout the season because even if the Vikings thought two, three weeks from now, okay, we're five and one, we're six and one. Let's try and make a move to bring in another interior lineman to help fortify the run game. I don't know how you're going to do that because there's no real assets to do that. So I think you're going to have to figure out how to slow the run game down internally. Well, and I think in miles, you kind of touched on it. The backups are playing well. I mean, you're looking at guys that are deserving of maybe those starting spots when some of these guys start to get back, right? Like that's, what's so great. The depth is really shining and showing and B flow is is using that to his advantage as well so just absolutely uh incredible ross if we do get hurt ross is gone no there he is there he is (laughs) if we do get hurt is there anybody locally that we could call i wanted to say ghostbusters the way you said that but we know that ghostbusters would be the wrong answer the right answer is our friends at nicolay law the exclusive personal injury injury law firm of purple daily that is Nicolay Law, they know that when you or a loved one gets injured, ordinary life can come to a stop. Things get complicated. That's where the folks at Nicolay Law come in. They're your everyday folks. They're the ones you see at the gas station, hanging out at the golf course with Jesse Pierce, walking the dog with Miles Gorham. Yeah, you'll even see him at the watering hole, too. That's why we love these guys. Normal everyday folks who are here to let you get the compensation you deserve after an accident. If you've been injured, get Minnesota's local award-winning injury lawyers. Get Nicolay. Here's how you do that. Start your path to winning at NicolayLaw.com. That's NicolayLaw.com. You can also call them at 855-NICOLAY. That's 855-NICOLAY. Beautiful. I would like to call on some of our engagement from our comments in YouTube, if you don't mind. Comments from YouTube. I lined up a few for you. Let's start with Jeffrey Severson, 135, who says, I've been a Vikings fan for 50 years. I love this team and I love our coaching staff. We are legitimate and I am very hopeful. That's a painful word as a Vikings fan. Hopeful. Let's win multiple Super Bowls before I die. Question for both of you. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you trust KOC and the coaching staff of the Minnesota Vikings? Miles, we'll start with you. Oh, I'm like at like a 9, and I'm not usually that confident in coaching, but like I just feel like this team is rolling, and I, I think um, there might, there's, there's obviously things to nitpick. You can always nitpick any team for anything, but I think overall i do trust this this coaching staff and like where they're trying to go and i love the aggression when when it needs to be aggressive and i love when they take out the you know i don't ever like the idea of taking your foot off the gas but overall like i i think i trust i trust koc and i trust brian flores and the rest of the coaching staff and so i'm gonna say a nine 11 i trust koc with my life <laughs> Eso too. no i think beyond that you can tell the players trust the coaching staff. And I think you need both of those things to be true in order to be successful. I think everybody's completely bought in and not to say that they haven't been in years past, but again, there's been changes, right? There's been different things happening. And I think everybody's committed in moving that needle very far forward. Like Miles said, the aggression. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. Like go for it. Let's do it. Let's have some fun out there. Plus, you know, KOC just, there, he's got that look in his eye sometimes that I'm like, eh, I trust you probably more than you should ever trust a man, but I do. So don't let me down on a scale of one to 10. We're averaging a 10 thanks to the nine and the 11. However, Jesse's <laughs> maybe easy more. Math. I love Je- easy math, by the way. So Jesse's good. however, may be more because of looks than actual coaching. Sometimes but- no, it's both. It's both. Okay. I was going to say, otherwise I might have to disqualify that one, but we'll give it to you. I- I'm, I'm with you guys. I think right now, as it should be confidence level, is very high. I like what Miles said. It's easy to nitpick. Everybody does. We've already done it in this podcast, and the Vikings are 4-0.
So there we go. Here's another one for you from Jim Fish, 4968. Jefferson should be JJ. McCarthy should be J Mac. I believe didn't Justin Jefferson already tell JJ, hey, my nickname's JJ, so you figure something else out. But here's what <laughs> no, I he didn't do that, by the way. I thought he, he did. did that. Did no, he told them I'm Jets. Like, oh, okay. Me, that's what it Jets. is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's not where we're going with this question, however. And Jesse no. kind of already alluded to it. It's time to give Sam Darnold a nickname. I like Slingin' Sam. Do we all like Slingin' Sam? Sambo is a good one, but it really only works at Lambo. Well, yes. That's yeah, it's very What do we I, what do we like for Sam Darnold's nickname? I mean, I am a sucker for alliteration, so I will always try to go that route. There's just something about but Slingin' Sam to me still doesn't come off the tongue, roll off the tongue quite as easily as I'd like it to, right? So I think there's work to be done there. Um, you know, Sam, I, I like rhyming too. Sam, I am something there. I'll put on my M M&M hat later on my, my rap oh. hat and I'll come up yeah. with something really clever. Miles, you got anything? I don't, I, I like, I'm good. With, tough. I'm good with any of those. Like I just call him Sam, I guess. I don't know. Darnold. I call him. I'm, I'm like, I just I'm call not, him not even, Sam. What's up, Sammy? Oh, just call him Darnold. <laughs> but like, I, like, you know, playing sport, I feel like you called everybody by their last names. So I just yeah. like always say like things like Darnold in those situations or um, Jefferson. I even, I even do like Jefferson with, with jets, right? Like I don't even do or JJ cause I'm trying to, I'm trying to get rid of it because I know long-term it needs to be JJ McCarthy and jets and yeah. not, you know, I'm trying, I'm working on it. Um, but for Sam, I don't, I have, I'm just going to keep calling him Darnold um, and and the F word when I'm mad, like if there's bad situations, <laughs> like, <laughs> do you know what we'll continue to call him for now? QB one. We'll call him QB one. Well, QB one. <laughs> hey, and he well might done, be, Jesse. he might be the uh, uh, September he, player he, of the month. He could be yep. honest, to, honest to Pete, you guys, if he keeps this going. up, I, I'm going to say it. MVP. Say it. Say it out loud. Sure, but I think we have to get through at least October just before saying, we can really guys, have those comments. Look at have, Miles is worried right now. <laughs> we've just hates, seen it so we've seen so it so much. My optimism. He hates no, it no, so I much. love the optimism. That's like an ex, that's like saying we're going to the Super Bowl. And I'm not saying we can't. I got the song I, already prepared for us to go to the Super Bowl. It's gonna be my, great. Let my concern it. is it's a four game sample, and I'm not saying like, we're four yeah. no, so it doesn't matter. Like you can't get those back, you can't take those back. Those are those are dubs. You, you can't, you're not, you don't have to get those back, but we've seen strong four game samples from Kirko, right? Kurt, I call him, I call him Kurt a lot. Um, but uh, 2016, How yeah, did they 20, finish 2016? in 2016, like, yep. right? Well, like we've seen like a month strong play from QBs on this, in this team. And I just need to see a little bit more before I'm like, okay, he should stay in that conversation. Cause I think it's really easy to say any player playing a four game sample should be cons- called the best player in the league. Um, I'd rather give the award to like Kevin O'Connell in that case, though. If I'm being honest, I'll save you a spot at the parade route, maybe. Just okay, that's cool with me. Yeah, put, save me a spot. The chair will let me in for 20 years. Have to let me in. Yeah, you have to let, let, yeah, you have to let you in exactly. Here's what I'll say, you two and Jesse. Give me on a one to ten how proud of this transition you are. The Minnesota Vikings, we all know, thanks to Miles, it is confirmed they're heading to London to take on the New York Jets. And if the Vikings went into the bye week, if you would have said before the year they're going to go into the bye week at four and one or five and oh, we all would have said, sign me up for that. But we do know the Vikings head to London this weekend. Well, the Vikings head to London. Another team in purple, Jesse and Miles, returns home to St. Paul after a bye week. It's like a six, seven. It's like a, it's like a B, maybe a okay. C plus. You know, so like it's seven you, or eight. You elongated it. You I know, did, but I had to did. set it up. You did. You did. I did, Just, but I had to set it, it up. Point, Ross. But it was like at, a for effort, C plus for you passed. I can a C plus is good. I can live with plus that. Is, that's yeah. that's how you that's how you pass uh math. Math every time. Right? Yep, mm-hmm. exactly. C's get degrees. That's what they tell me. After a week <laughs> off, St. Thomas football returns to 1500 ESPN and 1500 ESPN.com. They'll take on Stetson this Saturday at home from O'Shaughnessy Stadium. If you're not going to be at the game, pregame at 1230. Kickoff at 1 on 1500 ESPN and at 1500ESPN.com. Also, St. Thomas Hockey returns this Sunday, taking on St. Cloud State at 1500 ESPN and 1500ESPN.com. Happy college hockey season 
to those who celebrate. It's time now for the Before I Die crew to give us their <clears throat> Before I Die. Miles, kick us off this week with a little Before I Die. All right. So this weekend, uh, the wife and I, we went to CHS Field. They had like this rhythm and bruise thing. It was like a you pay a lot of money and you go in and they have like beer and, and drink uh, things. They give you a little cup and you go around and you could try all different types of stuff. Nice. They had food, uh, all this stuff. It was it was a nice setup. I I I felt like it was a little too. I, am I am I getting old because I felt like I was like, and maybe where I'm going. The answer with it, is yes. Exactly. Anytime you have to ask if you're getting old, if, the answer is generally yes. This if it's too loud, loud, Miles, turn it down. And that's and that's like it wasn't loud, and they had a band. It was cool, like, but I felt like I was like, oh my god, like I'm getting old because like even the old people don't look as old as they used to, <laughs> and they look like one of you. Yeah, and I'm like, no, like. So I don't I don't know exactly where I'm going with my before I die. Just like <laughs> I don't want to get old. <laughs> That's like, you know, I I. But it was a, it was a good time. It was it was good to like try a different drinks from around the the Twin Cities and things like that. But um, yeah. Was it a blues band, rhythm and blues? So was it a blues band? No, it was, was it just more, music. It sounded more like a. Uh, my wife had coined it like, uh, kind of like a fallout band style. I don't know. I didn't really listen. Okay. I don't really listen to them. So, but they were they were solid. So Who's too busy good. saying "Get off my lawn"? It's yeah. too loud in here. <laughs> I, well, we were sitting there, and I was like, "Well, and it's it's." I don't like to complain about the weather too much because I I live in Minnesota. It's really oh, hard. Oh, preach! To, it was horrid but outside. It was this so hot, and I'm so like, "Bro, hot. I'm trying to go outside and just like enjoy the. It's supposed to be a little cooler, right? Yeah. Just a little bit. I don't need it to be 40s yet. I don't need yeah. even 50s. But it was like in the mid to high 80s. And I'm like, come Preach, on, brother. And then it was so, 50 reach. when you woke up that morning. So it's like it's it, cold when you're stepping outside and then yes. by noon you're sweating. So you're taking off. It's just a lot. I agree. Exactly. So I don't know exactly why before I die, but maybe it's just I just don't want to. I'm getting old and I'm, I can tell and I'm getting more curmudgeon. Is that the right word? So yes. I just I want to slow that down for yeah. myself before I die. Similar to that. So I had uh Thanks for wishing me a happy birthday, guys. It was my birthday. Happy Saturday, birthday. It's fine. Happy, no, it's birthday, to happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, Jesse. Ross, you a, Ross owes you a drink. This is true. 37, so I'm proud of that. But it was funny because we went, so we were at Oktoberfest, which it, it's a huge deal. I highly recommend anybody if they want to make a two-hour Which one did you go to? So lacrosse has this big one. It's like the biggest okay. one in the Midwest. It's like a two-hour parade, whatever. It's really fun. They've got these fest grounds, whatever. But for the first time, similar to what you're saying, Miles, like the 40 year olds felt like my people. Like we were there listening to live music <laughs> and I'm just casually having like a beer, you know, whatever. It was just like, these are, these are my people like this. You weren't this casually weekend. having anything. I wasn't. There were so many. Drinks <laughs> this it was a, it was a good weekend. I am glad they only uh, celebrate your birthday once a year. It's just, it was a lot, but it was great. Cause we had no kids. Me and my best friend were out there. We were with her dad too. And I was like, we're finally all like the same age. <laughs> like we're old, but it was good. I got two for you quickly. One, we'll start doing, before I die, we'll start doing Oktoberfest in October and not in September. So that's, that's the first one. That's what they do one. in Germany. It's in, that's their thing. Uh, all I'm saying is the name is a lie then. And I've, I've thought that for years. If it's <laughs> going to be Oktoberfest, it needs to be in the month of October. Uh, so then my next one is, is football related. And everybody knows I, I'm a Gophers fan. The Gophers did not lose the game mm. because of officiating on Saturday. They, they did not. But I will say this. We need to get back to a point in sports where we're either reviewing nothing or we're reviewing everything. Like you mm -hmm. e either everything's on the table or nothing's on the table. Yeah. Because I, if people don't know what I'm talking about, the Gophers recovered an onside kick very likely would have tied, maybe beat Michigan. However, they were offsides. When you look at the angle and it's not a perfect down the line angle, it doesn't look like the players offsides. I will submit. He probably was. I'm not saying that I'm not arguing that. I'm just saying, if you're going to make that call at that point in the game, that, actually Political did end up moment. determining the outcome of the game. We should probably be able to review that, especially if we can review something as dumb as did a player get off the field in time. <laughs> if we can review that, yes. why can we not review offsides on an onside kick? That just doesn't make any sense to me. Anyways, Great that's one. neither here nor there. I'm not saying the, the Gophers didn't lose because of that. It was a part of it. They dug their own grave early, but I just, whenever I see stuff like that, I'm like, we review 
so much ridiculous stuff. And then a play like that, that does determine the outcome of the game. We don't, doesn't make any sense to me. So let's either review everything or review nothing before I die. Then that's all I got. It's great to see you two again. I love it. Well, my final one before I die, uh, I'm going to remove time constraints on menus. I cannot stand when I can only order breakfast at certain places when all I really want is a hot ham and cheese from Hardee's. And I was passing one because there aren't very many of them. It was nine in the morning. And yes, I would have downed a hot ham and cheese because as I mentioned, it was a long weekend and I saw I wanted, but I couldn't. I had to order a breakfast food. And similarly, I'm sure there are people out there that love their breakfast foods at McDonald's or Hardee's and now they can't get those like remove all time constraints for menus. Let me order what I want. I feel like you guys don't agree with this, but that's no, what I, I need. do. I was I just thinking it. off the top of my head. The only Hardee's that I know yeah, of so many. around here. And I'm not even positive if, it, if it's still open. Maybe you do, Jesse. Is the one right by us at Hubbard headquarters in St. Paul still open? Yeah. That's a oh. that's a Hardee's, oh. right? That one's open? Nice. Okay. It's right off of... Uh, 94 and something. It's not Snelling. It's right right before Snelling. I can't remember that exit. It's like right over by uh, Concordia. I so got one, go, in, Jesse. I got one in Oakdale. So that was fine. But I was oh. going past... Like, yeah, there's oh, there one. is one in Oakdale. You're right. Yeah, there is. There's one yeah. over in Oakdale. I know. Talk- I know where they all are. There's a Let's couple. Talk- Let's talk out. offline, Jesse, because if you can find the one in Oakdale and I have no idea where it's at, and we, basically are, and we are neighbors, I need to I need to get help from you it's on this right one. Right by hy V, right off. Hy-Vee and Cub anywhere. and all that. Yeah. 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 By some really no, great, the D spot, great wing spot. If you ever want to go get mm-hmm. some good wings, D spot. Off of like White Bear Ave? No. 694 and 10th. 10th Street, I think. Yeah. And 10th Street. Yeah. This is how little I get out, everybody, and this use, comes as no shock to Ross, anybody. I go Ross. out of my way to go to Hardee's once in a while, and I'm like, God, Ross, I just need just a use, just use Google or Google, Google. Maps. Okay. Yeah. It'll can show you. Tell me, can you tell me how to get that on my on one of these computer phones here? How do I get those maps? I'll bring you an atlas the next time I see you. So you can, just one of those old. road maps. And I'm t- if Arby's brought back hot ham and cheese sandwiches, it wouldn't be such an issue, but they haven't, and so now I, Hardee's is my only outlet, and Lately, I've been craving that even more than Taco Bell. So that's going to do it for us this week. Mercifully, we'll wrap this bad boy up. Uh, But as always, thanks to you guys. Don't forget to check out all the other Purple Daily content constantly rolling. Shout out to all of our audience uh, listeners and and watchers for their engagement and their reactions. We love it. I know everybody at Score North loves it. Check out all the other content. As uh, Ross said, you've got hockey coming back. There's still Wolves gearing up as well. And twins, you can go and figure out how you feel about all of that. I went down the twins rabbit hole this morning, guys. I was like, God, I'm just mad. I'm just angry, and I'm trying not to be. But If you want some Minnesota Timberwolves, Carl Anthony Towns takes. Flagger and oh. Howells is the place oh, to yeah. be over the weekend yeah. and this week. So uh, check that out, Flagger See, and this Howells. This is the problem when you have a weekend kind of off-grid where you're just worried about other things and not being on your phone. The news that I missed, like I didn't know until yesterday that the Gophers did almost beat Michigan. I woke up very early needing water on Saturday morning to the Carl <laughs> Anthony town moves. I was like, Whoa, like what is happening? It was just, it was I, this is the old, the old guy in me. I fell asleep like five minutes before that news broke. And the news <laughs> broke at like nine 40. Yeah. So. I, oh, I was sound asleep by eight o'clock. <laughs> Miles, I was literally walking downstairs to go to bed, saw that and said, oh, I guess I got to go cut up a video for social media. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, how about that for a Friday, a Friday evening, right? Friday night news dump? Oh, by the way. Yeah. Blockbuster. All right, kids, we will see you again next week. Until then, let's go Vikes. Skull. Ross? Oh, that's right. We're going a long way from Hennepin County this weekend.